Hi class. Next in this uh, hit parade of the asymptotic evaluation of uh, integrals, um, we're going to talk about the method of stationary phase. So picking up from the very video on Fourier type integrals, was, this is a Laplace type integral with an uh, oscillatory exponential. But now we're going to consider the case where the phase function, psi, has a critical point, that is psi prime of c vanishes somewhere between uh, the, in the interval between a and b. So if we think about the behavior of the function we're integrating, f times e to the i x uh, times psi as x gets large, then typically this is going to os oscillate wildly. However, close to the point where c has a critical point, it doesn't want oscillate quite as wildly. And so we would expect, say, in, uh, inspired by our understanding of the riemann lebesgue lemma, that the uh, pieces where the interval is oscillating wildly uh, are going to actually cancel out. And instead, the dominant contribution is going to come from the slowly oscillating piece where the phase is stationary, where the derivative of the phase is close to zero. So we use the same basic idea that we did before. We're going to assume the integral is dominated uh, by the contribution near t equals c as x goes to infinity. We divide our integral up into an integral between a and c to just left of c and from just right of c to b, and then the integral in the region of c. We do the expansion in the neighborhood of t equals c of both the prefactor f and the phase function uh, psi. We're going to assume, as x goes to infinity, that everything is dominated by this middle integral. And in the usual way, therefore, that we can take out the, um, uh, the uh, prefactor f evaluated at c. The, the first term is e to the i x psi of c from the expansion. And what's left is just a complex Gaussian, the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the i x psi double prime of t minus c squared over 2. Well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Gauss, complex Gaussian integral, the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity to e to the i alpha x squared. Let's take the example that alpha is greater than 0. Then, um, this is the integral that we have here along the curve c, along the, the real axis in the z plane of e to the i uh, z squared. What we'd like to do is rotate by 45 degrees along to the, to rotate along to the curve z uh, along the path of integration is e to the i pi over 4 times x tilde. If we do that, then e to the i z squared, um, uh, if z equals e to the i pi over 4 times x tilde, then e to the i z squared becomes e to the minus uh, x tilde squared. So that's why we want to um, uh, rotate by 45 degrees. Um, in order to do that, we basically have to show that the integral at infinity that, that comes from, from connecting these contours together uh, vanishes. And I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. It's not too hard to show uh, why. This is, you don't even need Jordan's lemma for this one. You can show this because the controlling factor um, as you go into the complex plane vanishes so quickly with r, like e to the minus r squared. That's essentially the reason why uh, you're allowed to rotate the contour. If you do that contour rotation, then you pick up an e to the i pi over 4 from the new path of integration, and this just becomes a regular Gaussian integral. So you get e to the i pi over 4 times the square root of pi over alpha. If alpha is less than 0, you have to rotate in the opposite direction to get a vanishing Gaussian. So you get an e to the minus i pi over 4. So putting it all together, you find that the asymptotic form for i of x is f evaluated at c, the phase function evaluated at c, then you get an e to the plus or minus i pi over 4, depending on the, whether the second derivative of psi is positive or negative, and you get the square root of 2 pi over x times the absolute value of psi double prime, which is either plus psi double prime or minus psi double prime, depending on whichever is positive. Notice, just like in the case of Laplace's method, the leading term, other than the exponential factor, goes like 1 over the square root of x, not like a power of x. We can use that for one of the most common functions that we run into in mathematical physics, the, the Bessel function of order 0. Um, here's an integral expression for the Bessel function of order 0, two, 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi over 2 cosine of x cosine theta d theta. And we're interested in what happens as x goes to plus infinity. We can write the cosine as the real part of e to the i x cosine theta. Then we have exactly the sort of uh, a Laplace type integral with uh, a, an oscillatory function. Um, we can look for where this, uh, this is stationary. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. So it actually has a stationary point right at the endpoint. But we know from Laplace's method how to deal with 
having a, a, a stationary point at the end point, basically instead of doing the Gaussian integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, do the Gaussian integral from zero to infinity. You do the quadratic approximation near theta equals zero, uh, and you get you know the co cosine of theta close to zero is just one minus theta squared over two. Um, and then you, you do the usual approximation for the asymptotic form. You change the integral to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus i x theta squared over two. You get an e to the minus i pi over four because you have to rotate uh, clockwise in the complex plane. Here's the square root of two pi over x that we got before, and we just get one half because here the critical point was at the end point, so we're only integrating from zero to infinity. If you put it all together, you find that j0 of x is the square root of two pi over x times the real part of e to the i x minus pi over four, which is two pi over, square root of two pi over x cosine of x minus pi over four as x goes to infinity. And this is a very useful expression. This is physically, for example, uh, one way of seeing why j0 arises from um, the wave equation in two dimensions because its magnitude falls off like one over the square root of x, which is exactly how you would expect the amplitude of a cylindrical wave to fall as a function of distance if x were a radial uh, coordinate instead. Well, what do you expect for the next order term? If the leading term was one over the square root of x, you'd expect the next order term to be one over x. However, there are many different places that that subleading term can come from. It can come from the subleading pieces of the expansion around the stationary point, which we've kept, but it can also come from the endpoint uh, behavior of the, uh, of the other parts of the integral, from a to c minus epsilon, or from c plus epsilon to b. So it's difficult, in general, uh, while the stationary phase approximation is very physical, and for the leading term is pretty straightforward to compute, uh, it's difficult to generalize the method of stationary phase um, to cases uh, where you want subleading terms. Instead, you have to go all the way into the complex plane and analyze the behavior of the function more completely. And that will lead us to our final video on asymptotic evaluation of integrals, um, the method of steepest descent.